10 seconds to go. I think they're over. I would say they're even simply because there's a Slardar. Okay. Loon Druid alone, definitely not enough, but I think Slardar is definitely one of the more OP heroes, in my opinion. Yeah, we've seen a lot of teams use it extremely well. Uh, I believe yesterday CO played it once as an support, and the other time as an offlaner. I do want to say he played it... No, no, he, he was the Darkstar one game. DBB plays it mostly for the team. Yes, I, th I think that's correct. Yeah. Meanwhile... They had a really impressive... Yesterday, I, you know, originally I would have said that uh, I would have definitely favor Warriors Gaming before watching uh, Next Gen yesterday, mm -hmm. but I, you know, after seeing him yesterday, I actually think that this is a pretty even matchup. Yeah, Execration, I think maybe overestimated them. To be fair, though, I felt like Execration obviously they stomped Next Gen game one, and then game three, the one that they got so far ahead was they went for a fairly aggressive strategy and the early roaming. Of, I believe KL7 and Seal kind of just. Wait, who was that Earth Spirit that was just going to work? Was it Seal? I think it. I'm gonna have to go look. I don't actually remember. I'm gonna say that it was Seal. Ten seconds to go. Yeah, please go look it up because it was actually I think the richest Earth Spirit I've ever seen in my life. Wait, weren't you? No, no, no. That wasn't them though. That was Eden from RRQ. Oh, Eden. There I you go. That's, I think that's who you're thinking about. Yes, 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 yes. I was confusing the two teams. My apologies. So then do you retract that statement about this being a fairly even matchup or? I still think it's an even match. I'm just basing next gen off of their actual series. Not okay. the, uh, I, I wasn't mixing up the teams. <laughs> my bad, my bad. We've been casting so many games in the past couple of days that I, memory is- Yeah, uh, I, don't, I don't blame you. Yeah. I don't blame you. Especially since everyone picks very similarly. There's not too much variation. Right. The, the question is, are we going to see Avenge support or Avenge core? Ten seconds to go. At the moment, I would say that it's that kind of in the air. Okay. I, I actually am not too against seeing a core Venge here. I actually think it's not bad, especially since you have a Slardar. Just by having extra levels on Venge, you can easily swap into a Crush with sure. a Spoke setup. Obviously, the, the other thing could be just picking a defensive support to make sure that Long Druid doesn't get caught out. That's uh, definitely a way to go as well. And WG is going to go back for the Dazzle. It's a hero that they actually favor quite a bit. Although in practice, I'm not sure if it's that good. And honestly, against a hero like Long Druid, I feel like Dazzle is just not the type of hero you want, right? I, I think you want heroes that could kill the Long Druid, not necessarily preventing him from killing your team. I think it's not too bad here. I guess the idea is, since you're up against Stardar and Venge, you know, both of them having uh, the ability to minus armor. You can counteract that with the weave. Reserve time. Okay. We shall see. You know, come to think of it, how come no teams uh, pick Long Druid and Io together? I feel like they have quite a bit of synergy together. Lone Druid and Wiz? Yeah. How so? What, I mean, what's your, what do you mean? A lot of people just go on the Long Druid, right? So you got the defensive relocate as one part, and then... Lone Druid doesn't necessarily build a lot of regen, so Wisp solves that and just gives it, like, it puts him constantly at 522 and also at max attack speed. Just build your own hyper carry. I think the best thing about it is just, you know, being able to save him with relocate. Yeah. I think the the regen isn't too big of a deal because Lone Druid just uses his bear to soak up all the damage when farming, so most of the time he doesn't actually Can't need the regen. I guess you also don't really get the uh, the ganking aspect of Wisp. And next gen, they pick up the Silencer. So they definitely... I think this is actually going to be a core bench because... When you pick... I think if you pick up a Silencer here, the idea is basically to blow someone up before they can even grave, get uh, get the grave off. Okay. And it's also really good against the Ember Spirit and Earth Spirit, obviously. It's pretty good against this whole draft altogether. Yeah. And I'm not exactly sure what WG could pick to kind of go against that. Ember, like none of these heroes really get items that actually break global. I guess Earth Spirit could pick up a uh, Lotus Orb, but that's pretty much it. Ember maybe could get a Yules. I've seen some Ember getting a Mantas as well, but it's just not not really the first item you want to be going for. I think Yules is probably the best option here. If he's going to pick up something, like, I think if his build most likely will be Veil into uh, 
either Blink or Yules, depending on how the game is going for them. Mm -hmm. I actually am kind of convinced that Silencer is the, the secret the secret hero of this patch. Like, everyone's favoring all of these other heroes, but I think Silencer is actually pretty close to the top, at least in my opinion. Mostly because how he kind of match up against other heroes, or what's your... Ten seconds to go. Well, first of all, I think Global is just insanely strong. Five seconds. And, you know, originally when they made the change to Arcane Curse, I wasn't a big fan of it. But after trying it out, I actually really, really like Arcane Curse. And Last Word is just overall very strong as well. So basically his entire skill set is what makes him, in, at least in my opinion, like a tier one hero. I mean, I, I see where you're coming from. At least personally, when I play pubs in the China server, that's the build they max. They always max Curse first. Um, in terms of whether he whether he's a secret OP hero this patch, I'm I'm not particularly sold because I've I've seen games where he dominates. Like the last two days, we've seen uh, the the game that come comes to my mind was the Cuckoo mid Silencer against a Pudge lineup, and that was super good there. But I also see Silencers uh, also in the last two days where you don't use it with a team together. Uh, sometimes you know Global was used improperly and it just literally does nothing. So. That's true. It's it's very reliant on the team, like really on the same page, being yeah. on the same page for. It's very hit or miss usage. for me. Reserve time. All right, Warriors Gaming. They need one carry. They're still a Luna, but I don't think Luna matches up too well here. I think Luna's okay. I feel like you want some sort of man to carry so that you're not gimped by the I actually think like, Jug is better. Okay, PA is actually okay too. I was gonna say like some kind of carry that could buy Blink uh -huh. and kill them Druid by themselves. You know, we've been seeing this particular matchup every single game it feels like. Silencer versus PA. Yeah, that's that's a good point. Yeah, we, we Teams all... really favor PA. And I mean, to be fair, I don't think we've seen any PA games to great success. Yeah, I mean, we've seen them lane against each other once, and obviously that was a Silencer favorite matchup. But even during the mid game, um, PA obviously could jump into the Silencer and get the kill. At least that's the theory on paper, but in actual practice, I feel like it's Silencer favor pretty much every single time. I think, I think they pick PA just because they know what's going to be Silencer mid, or they highly anticipate it. And I don't think you want to lane your Ember against the Silencer, so it should be PA mid and then Ember Spirit in the safe lane. And this is uh, going to be the carry lone Druid, supports Largar and Venge. And we got a last pick Pit Lord, like you mentioned. Uh, you're guessing the Pit Lord is going to be the going to be the core. And saw that the offlane. I think there's a higher chance, but we'll we'll see in a moment. Okay. I'm pretty sure it should be core underlord. Yeah, whatever happened to this hero is you know, he used to be super popular. And I is this uh, gonna be a silencer core? Sorry if you you mentioned all of this, I was kinda making sure the stream was working and stuff. Oh, I I assumed that it was going to be a mid silencer core? and carry and carry, but it looks like Core Venge, yeah. yeah core it is going to be a Core Venge. Support Silencer, support Sardar, and then mid lone Druid. So this is kind of your original prediction to have higher levels of swap to obviously use it both offensively and defensively. Um, and then we're going to see a lone Druid mid versus, I I imagine, the, the Ember Sphere matchup. It feels like the lane should be fairly good here for next gen. Yeah, Nana is going to be playing that mid Ember, and I think lone Druid shouldn't have any issues with that. And then I think Dazzle PA and Earth Spirit, probably not enough to kill off an Underlord. I can't do ping here, apparently. I feel a little bit laggy. I think it's also a little too early to tell whether this is going to be a support or a core Underlord, because DVB and Seal actually swap in between games 
I that's believe. true. That's true. DBB mostly the support player, although sometimes they do swap. All right, we're done washing our hands. We're finishing the sandwich. Let's go, guys. <laughs> Alright, early smoke from both sides. Are they going to catch each other out? It seems like DBB is going to be playing the uh, the core pit lord. Sale does have the boots, but DBB getting the poor man shield is likely to sit in the lane a little bit more. I guess Seal is pretty much their designated uh, Sardar player. I, I don't think I've ever seen him not play it whenever they pick it up. That's true. That's true. And then, like you mentioned, when they picked Darkseer, it was him playing it. Maybe it's his specialty? Darkseer and uh, Sardar? Just the initiator kind of roles? Maybe yeah, it's... to be fair, he did a great job yesterday. Yeah, no complaints oh, here. I don't remember it was yesterday. Maybe it was the first set, first match of yesterday, I don't recall. 30 seconds to go. So, let's talk about this matchup, because I don't think we've seen it here. Uh, at the DACC broadcast, the, the Sand King versus Venge. Obviously, it's not a straight 1v1. Uh, he's going to have a little bit of support help. But if it is a 1v1, I think Venge just gets steps decimated in the lane, right? Yeah, I would say so. But they're not going to leave him. She's not exactly the greatest 1v1 hero. And it looks like Nana is actually going to be uh, playing the one position. It's going to be PA mid instead. They're going to avoid that Lone Druid Ember matchup. Yep. The PA mid could still harass the Lone Druid, obviously, although I think after seeing the PA mid, he just needs to pick up a magic stick and he'll should be, he should be okay. I think the PA's focus here is pretty much just to farm, unless there's a, a rotation. I think it's really difficult for a PA to have any kind of solo kill potential on a Lone Druid. Right. Now something I think you mentioned previously was that in the mid Lone Druid, you don't pick up the Orb of Venom. You kind of prioritize a little bit more in stats. Any big reason on why? I mean, I feel like it's still a good harass item. I... I think if you're gonna harass, just... You don't really need to invest 300 gold, or almost 300 gold, into an Orb of Venom. Okay. I guess, uh, for the Orb of Venom on the silence, the, the slow allows you to chase a little bit more, and the lane's much longer to allow you to get the chase off. Whereas in the mid lane, not so much. Man, that Arcane Curse, doing so much work on the bottom lane. Yep, as long as there's more than one hero, the value out of you get out of it is actually really high. Yep, especially if you drop in the middle of a fight and be like, okay, do you not want to cast spells or... Alright, so far every lane... Kind of as expected. I don't think there's really too many ways they can actually kill off an Underlord up here. So I think he'll be doing, he'll be doing fine for... He'll do fine in this lane. And I think oh, his... we're gonna see more of this pull. This is the the pull. I mean, I I really don't think this is the pull, but I guess that you can do this pull. And honestly, you can't really ward it. I mean, you technically can, but most people don't. It's like you said, it's not exactly V pull. But if you're in a tri lane and you're not really accomplishing too much in the lane, mm -hmm. this is definitely a very good go to. On the mid lane, Lone Druid surprisingly having a tough time against Ajit. Which makes no sense given the fact that he has two units to last it with. But Ajit, I guess, with the combination of his dagger and good last hitting overall. Uh, to be fair, playing Lone Druid like that is a little awkward sometimes. Because even though you do have two units, the timing is obviously going to be different because one's a projectile. True. It's also hard to harass a PA in the lane like this because with PMS you don't exactly do that much damage. Yep, and she's got the early skill and, and blur as well. I'm gonna look to Afu to start making rotations to the mid lane because I think level four or five that's when PA could really start forcing some kills with that early access into Blink Strike. But instead, it's gonna Sargar be Sargar is invis. Yeah, I, I don't think this is gonna be a kill unless there's a root, which he's pretty far away from five. I think he was trying to um, leech level 3. Okay. 
Well, as he's gone on the bottom lane here, Sapboy in a lot of trouble. He is going to be going down to the first blood. It was a bro strike into a heal bomb setup. And I think they definitely need a solder to be there to make sure that it doesn't happen. Alright, I think I underestimated how well this PA actually goes up against the Lone Druid. This Lone Druid is actually having quite a difficult time, actually. I mean, I, I want to say part of it, he's not playing super well, if I, I may say so. Like, he's missing a lot of last hits. He just purchased the Magic Stick, which I think he should have bought before even finishing the Ring of Aquila. And he, Ajit is getting a lot of mileage out of those daggers. And he, there's a double damage. I wonder if he's going to wait for level 6 for that DD to, to activate, or he's going to just go. I think he should just kind of feel it out first. Keep throwing daggers and see whether or not he's going to be in a good spot to actually make that kind of play. Right. Well, Dazzle's rotating in. I think that that might be the what he's waiting for. Ajit could just shove this lane in. Although I do, I think Xnova is going to get scouted. Him out. Yeah, Xnova might be dead here. Oh, first hit root, of course. And that is going to be a kill. PA comes back in. He. I don't think this is going to be a kill that you could force. All right. Very much needed kill for different heaven. Like yep. you said, not having the greatest time. But I think the overall, like, the the lane setup is so okay for NG. Like, I think particularly Pitlord getting absolute free farm in top lane is what they could fall back onto. Because generally when you see a free farm Pitlord, like, he's going to stay, like, the top three or two net worth. Oh, they're going on him. Oh, he's going to be very, very tanky, and he has TP support. It's going to be the slaughter. Triple Remnant is going to come in. Not a oh, dodges it. it. Okay. Nana might have actually been able to like force a kill by chasing in, but instead he's gonna let DBB go. Still though. Uh, actually really surprised he managed to dodge that. It didn't look like he was going to. Yeah. Still though, I think that's a big win here for NG because as the remnant's the gonna triple remnant, yeah. Yeah, use and he he could just TP back and bully the lane once again. Oh, different heavens just avoiding the mid lane altogether. I guess he really respects that double damage. Like he knows he has it, and I guess yeah. he just doesn't want to risk it. As he should. And here comes a rotation from Ajit. Although he might just be looking for him in the jungle. Now different heaven shows himself to the observer war in the mid lane. This should make my life easier. And Ajit's gonna right. make that rotation. Oh, look at how scared he is. Yeah, they see him with that oh, ward. He's standing right next to that ward. Yeah, but. The fact that he didn't get a early crit. Oh, bottom lane, Ben. Thinking about it. No, he backs off. Double damage running out soon. Her spirit is uh, behind the tree line here. Man, different heaven is playing so carefully. I say that though, the row coming in. Where's the kick? Nothing. Blink strike and dagger comes in. There's a kick. It seems like half the team wanted to go in, half the team did not, and it's just a little well, bit. On the bright side, at least they didn't actually. Yeah, nobody died. Overcome it. I think Afu was a little low on mana, maybe. Bottom lane, Sapoy, dropping extremely low. Looks like you're gonna just port home. Right, Sapoy actually is having a really rough time here. He's only level 4. <laughs> He's not having a great time in this safe lane. He's lower level than the support silence. So. I mean, Venge carry is not something that's very good in the lane, in my opinion. Like, the only time I ever see him winning the lane is when he has double stunning supports, one of them being a Visage, right? And then you just, like, nuke the hell out of everybody. But that's not really Venge winning the lane, that's just Visage winning the lane. Alright, bottom lane. They're converging here. Kale 7 is hiding in the trees. I wonder if they're going to try to defend this. Looks like they are to scan on top of the tree line, but this is becoming the new hiding spot on the right side instead of on the left. Slaughter is rotating in, but Venge is just leaving now. I think that, yeah, they're giving up. No, actually, no, they're not. They still have a glyph. So they're going to be a TP. They need to go soon. Alright, here comes the Lone Druid TP. 
I mean, where's the lockdown on all of this? Afu is going to come through. They're going to get the tower, I believe. Yeah, tower is going to go down regardless. And now Afu is going to be fine, I believe, as well. So that was just like four heroes standing here. I guess different heaven TP'd in. But they accomplished pretty much nothing. Did they even glyph for that? They did glyph for that. But that was quite a questionable defense. Like, yeah. like you said, not really accomplishing too much. And, oh, well, Ajit, he has an invis. They have to be really careful here. They have four heroes here. This might be a free one or two kills. They're not careful. If they kick for a stun, that should be all they need. Oh, they, they want a barrel strike first. There's a dagger coming through, and the kick actually misses. The burst strike's gonna be there. Sad Boys is not gonna get the kill because of the grave. They do get the one kill, and now Sad Boys is gonna get pinged out here for the secondary kill as well. Afu might go down to the curse. It's not exactly the highest level of curse. And Ben Sandstorms under the tower. Oh, the crit's gonna come through from Ajit, and that's gonna be yet another kill. Ben taking a lot of them uh, curses. He needs to TP out, but I think the creep waves on him. He's gonna be dead. Oh my God. No. Nope. He buys a bottle. So close. Yeah, he buys a bottle and, and heals up too. Good stuff. What level was that curse? A oh, level three. Should Man, be three. Yeah. It doesn't do that much damage. It feels like Ajit getting eyes on different heaven, but somehow he realized that there's a PA in the high ground. I'm not exactly sure how. Radiance mid towers getting banged up. He felt it. He felt it. <laughs> By the way, uh, DBB has not left this lane at all. Yeah, I'm actually kind of surprised about that too. I think they could really use his help. Maybe they're just waiting on his mech. mech yeah. He's almost got it. Nana trying to trade right click with his Ember Shield on, which honestly, I think Pitlor wins that w r right click. Oh, he's got a Firestorm again. Nana has to be careful. Triple Remnant in. Boom. All right. Oh, it's going to be close. Okay, he's going to be nah, fine. he's fine. I guess he doesn't win that right click war. So I guess effectively, next gen have pretty much lost every lane. I wouldn't say the top lane is lost, like the, the one kill is okay. But the mid and bottom, yeah. Well, for the most part, sure, Pitlord has a lot of farm, but Nana also has a ton of farm. True. And unfortunately, I don't think Pitlord's farm translates to too much. Yes, the early mech is great, but... Well, I guess technically next gen could group up and find man towers, but I don't think that's what they're planning to do. I, I don't know how I feel about that though, because even if you have the early mech, there's really not much damage on next gen's team. Right. Like, Lone Druid doesn't really have much. Oh, mid lane. Ball back in for Ajit. Global is going to get committed as well here. A really good global, because or else that PA was going to get saved by the, the Dazzle TP. And then now with this kill, I think they could actually go for the five man towers. Five of them actually here for once. Yep. Pop that bucket. No? Okay. They feel up. scared because they're they're all weaved. That's true. And global is down and TA's or PA is coming back alive, so. And they might actually know that Ben has this blink dagger picked up. Smoke? I think WG will probably consider a smoke here. Yep. And right now they need to give seal farm. Like he's probably their their most important player right now. Uh, I think with this lineup, it's actually okay if he doesn't finish the blink as fast. But Venge really needs levels. I disagree. I think I think you I think you can actually rely on Venge for now. Oh, DBB. Oh, DBB. Do they not see him? They don't see him farming in the low ground. Their smoke just broke, and they're checking on the north side. And finally, they do see him now. But okay, Epicenter is gonna get channeled, and he does have the mech. Maybe he can make it to the shrine. It's not gonna be close. He pops the shrine. It's gonna be a three man oh firestorm, God. and the pin of malice being dropped. He's still being healed up. He's finally gonna die. But how much damage has been sustained? Burrow strike on the way out here. Ben, another two three man stun here. That's gonna be one kill. Nana taking a lot of damage as well. But looks like it's not gonna be enough. The rotation here by NG is just not quickly enough. They lose three. They lose four. And what looked pretty good as a start was not so good as only one hero at a time came in and obviously all of WG was there. I think the other issue is that WG just... I mean, sorry, not WG, next gen. Like I said, there's just not that much damage. Until Lone Druid actually has items, they don't really do anything at all. Yeah. That was like, a... How often do you see a team fight lost on top of a shrine? I mean, to be honest, the shrine and the mech was used on essentially one person, so... 
Oh, he didn't have he didn't have mech yet. I think if he had mech, that would have actually been. Oh, he didn't. Are closer. you sure? I'm pretty he sure he popped mech. He just had buckler. Okay. Very. I'm hundred percent sure. Just watching his inventory. Okay. I'm gonna watch the watch the vod in five minutes. All right, all right. And say you're wrong. I'm never wrong. DVB gonna get Burrow Strike right after TPing in. The global is gonna get committed here. Are they gonna try to turn it around? The Pit of Malice trapping Nana a little bit, but he's gonna be fine. He's gonna jump back out. Ben inside the, the trees, but he has Blink relatively soon. He will Burrow Strike and Blink away. As the silence has not set in yet by the last word. That's like a huge loss for next gen because that's another global down. They got nothing with it. Yep. If Warriors Gaming really wanted to, they can easily take another team fight now, now that the global is down. And then a smoke, and then a, and then a team fight. They have a pretty deep observer ward. Do they see Venge farming here? I don't think they do. Right, so earlier we were talking about... I was saying it's very important for Seal to get the blink. And you said that they could rely on the Venge more or less. I think the the blink dagger is what is what really is their key form of initiation. Remember that bottom tier one defense, like they just don't have any way to start a fight. Bottom lane, seal. He looks very dead. So I mean, and as you're talking about how important it is for him to get that blink, looks like he's going to be get even further away from it. Yep. Afu does have the urn. Pretty standard build for him. And also, the, the reason I, I think that the, the blink is important is that Silencer is also dependent on it. As we saw previously, like, these globals are just not looking very good, but if you're on the initiating train, and you get the, uh, you get the sun on top of that, then it's quite good. I think, though, at this point, it's, it's become... Uh, it's gone to the point where, even if he does get a blink, next gen just don't exactly have enough farm to make use of that that blink dagger there's yeah. still not enough damage like until lone druid finishes maelstrom at least there's just really no damage yeah the the blink right now doesn't actually win you team fights maybe it'll help you get a gank or two which is probably what they need to do to make a comeback like if they could you know blink uh stun the pa global on top of that and get a quick kill i think their biggest their Target priority should probably be Ember first. I actually even... I'm not even sure if they're able to kill PA at this point. Oh, they were trying to lay a bait here for Seal, but... There's no catch. I wonder if uh, Sapboy should just have his Satyr Creep mic rolled onto... Onto the Slaughter. So that they actually have some form of chase. I think he's... Wait, where is his creep anyways? He's checking Roche right now. Which is also fair, I guess. Hard to say. He needs to purge himself too if he wants to use swap. Probably just easier overall just to focus on yourself. Unless you share control. You know, come to think of it, whenever I see uh, Faceless play their... The Helm of Dominator games, it feels like the creeps is just everywhere. Whereas in this kind of game, it just feels like it's... Very static and not doing much. I would pro I, I actually kind of agree with you there. To be fair though, I, I don't think every player is capable of the same controlling micro. it the way Ice 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 does. Yeah, yeah, Ice 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 is very, very good at controlling his uh his creep. I guess it's also more of what kind of lineup you're playing, right? Like the creep just adds so much more when everyone else is also oh, roaming gaining. I don't think Nana's even like there's no way. Yeah, he, he saw him rotating as well. Bottom lane. Burrow Strike's gonna come in. Epicenter gets channeled up. Nice kick to make sure that the Epicenter comes in. And that global is what I call a do-nothing global as it didn't even cancel anything. But it might Are actually help yet? him. Yeah, he's gonna survive here. Do something global. But oh, nah, it's gonna come in. That's gonna be one kill. Different heaven. He's gonna go into his ultimate. They do get the swap back in for the kill. The fear, the silence, the stun, everything on top of Nana, but he's gonna jump back out. No, he doesn't even want to jump back out. PA's comes back in. That's gonna be one more kill. Different heavens trying to run. He's gonna get dagger, gonna get slowed down. The crits are coming through. He's trying to body block himself, but Nana blinks back in. Remnants to break the trees, and that's gonna be three more kills. You know, Seal looking for the blink, and I'm starting to agree with you. Even if he does get the blink, it's just maybe too little too late. 
Yeah, it's they fought through a global and there's just no damage. It's just a dragon lance lone druid. He only hit. He doesn't even have his level 15. Like in order to do damage with lone druid, you have to be level 15 and I would say have at least maelstrom, and then and then you hit really hard. Until then, you don't really do damage. I think what we were seeing this game and also in the last couple of days is that lame winning strategy is just the way to go. It seems like. I don't think I've seen a team where they lost like two lanes and came back. I feel like most of these games are just one team being able to snowball off the a very good laning stage and just winning, regardless of mistakes or whatnot. I think to s I would definitely agree with that, but this is like a very, very high degree of lane losing. <laughs> yeah. Because I, I think like two lanes completely lost, and then the top lane, like you said, Pitlord was farming pretty well, but I mean, he still ended up giving a solo kill up to Nana, and that just made Nana get like one and a half levels. All right, here comes the blink. Yep, it only gets one though, and there's no follow-up. There's no global either. And here comes Nana. It's gonna come through on the back line. Going on KL7. That's gonna be one kill. He does get rooted, but Grey Sun here on DVP. He's gonna be dead as well. Burrow Strike onto the right side here. Venge caught out. Okay, he does swap himself into the fight on the other side. Nana with the grave turned on. He's just going in. He doesn't care. He blinks forward. He's gonna be surviving. Nice chain here. And that's gonna be a five man wipe. Would not surprise me if the GG gets called right here because that was the last hurrah for Seal with a blink dagger picked up. Nana, the first one in, the last one out. Just like uh, that hard worker in the office, man. <laughs> Gets in 8 a.m., leaves in 8 p.m. Just putting in work. Yeah, that was just really well played by Nana. He knew exactly what he was capable of once he got saved by that grave. He had 17 wand charges. He wasn't afraid at all. Yeah. And I don't know, next gen kind of jumping the gun there. They Maybe they could have waited for the global silence. Sure. It was only five seconds off. I mean, I don't end up taking the team fight anyways. I don't blame them because I feel like they are so desperate for something, anything right now. And now it looks like Seal is gonna get caught here by a bro strike. Look at this damage! Oh my goodness! He just got 100% to to nothing. Okay, swap Ajit back in. Ajit does have the Aegis. His team needs to come back here. That Pit of Malice, I think, will re reroot a second time. But here comes Afu. Okay, nice root into fear, but he's just so fast, and of course he has Grave backup. I wonder if that fear was even necessary. I, th I think... Uh, I don't think I have actually have any more lockdown for him, though. Oh, you're saying the fear might have helped him run away faster? Yeah. But... They just didn't really have any lockdown anyways. I don't think there was any real way they were going to kill him. Everyone was positioned for him to blink strike onto anyways. Alright, they have... Pretty much everything up, and they have one smoke, so I guess this is gonna be the real final team fight that they take. Burrow Shrike from the back line, not Global? Not dies here. Okay, Global is gonna oh, save them. no. Yeah, that's a defensive Global. Okay, two-man chain. Now they're rowing here against DBB. What a kick! Oh, oh my god, Afu! And now in the back line, it's just everyone getting murdered. KL7 taking a ton of damage. Burrow Shrike is gonna hit on two. The bear dies, or sorry, Pitlord dies, and they're trying to run. KL7 is going to get daggered down. Oh, they, they do miss the, the seal chain, but don't think they really care. Oh no, the bear, not like this. Easy, 300 gold. Man, that kick by Afu, though. That was a very, very impressive kick. Yeah. Three, man ki three man stun, three man silence. Full value out of his rocks. Still has one remaining. He also doesn't have blink. That's the more impressive thing, right? Like he just rolled in to make sure to get that positioning. Earth Spirit players, always impressive. Yep. Oh, and Nana is going for that radiant still. Is this really a build, or is this more of a we're winning so hard? No, no, this is a, this is a build. It's just not as popular as the Mjolnir one. Okay. Is this a win more build? Hard to say. If you have it this early and their opponents don't really have anything, sure. 
Right, but the only time you can have it this early is when you're winning super hard, yeah? This is like the, as hard as it gets. Yeah. 4 to 21, that net worth lead, you know, the casual 6,000 over their mid. Yeah. So earlier you were saying the, the lane losing, like this is a, a pretty hard lane loss. And I think on top of that, these are heroes that can't afford to lose the lane, right? Venge needs to win the lane. Longdrin needs to win the lane because they're not exactly great flash farmers in the mid game. And they need that big boost in gold and levels. I think losing bottom lane is actually not too bad, but the mid lane cannot lose yeah. that bad. By the way, Longdrin is still level oh, 14. Oh, here comes a big wraparound. Ro, Global's gonna be there, okay, pretty decent, and now they do catch X Nova on the back line here, it does force himself back out, but Achi just comes in and just starts killing people one by one. That Radiant's doing a lot of work as well, he's doing slow down, Sad Boys comes back in, Nana blinks forward. Okay, Sad Boys gonna swap himself back out, but the Epicenter is gonna find him. Meanwhile, looks like Different Heaven's trying to run, he is gonna get burned down by the Radiance. And, uh, Seal is the only one surviving. Okay, looks like DBB's, uh, out as well. <laughs> That was actually so funny. Next next gen, they pop the globe ball, right? And they kill Afu off immediately, which is definitely really something they really want. They need to get rid of this Earth Spirit as fast as they can. And they kill off the Earth Spirit. Afu buys back and accidentally TP is right on top of the fountain. <laughs> I thought that was really funny. I mean, they didn't really need him anyways. They got three for nothing. Oh, they have three for one. All right, WG. Trying to finish this up, this game out. That pit of malice, though, being being pretty annoying. 